Praise the Lord, dear people. Previously on Sunday, we have read Numbers chapter 23. In that, we have seen all the prophecies which Balaam had given against the people of Israel. Balak told to make seven altars, bring seven bulls, seven rams, sacrifice each bull and ram in each of the altars, and then you're gonna curse the people of Israel. But Balaam, what he did? He blessed them abundantly. With all things we have seen. Two times he did like that only. In his first prophecy also, in his second prophecy also. But all things we have seen previously on Sunday, all that he has prophesied and all the blessings which he flourished them with, about the water, about the food, about the victories, about the war, everything, he blessed them so abundantly. Even God cannot curse the people of Israel. For that reason, he has blessed them. That all things we have seen. And when? God is going to talk to the people, to talk to Balaam. who is disobeying me, is telling to curse the people, then I will go to a new place on the top of Mount Air. Uh, I will come to you and talk with you what you must say. First you must be separate from this Balak the king. Then only I am coming and talking with you. And that is God told that you should be separate. That also we have learned previously. That whenever you are going to talk with God, you have to first disconnect yourself to public or people to worry. Then only you are going to talk with God. Then only God is going to listen to you and you are going to listen to Lord. It's a two-way conversation, you know. You are going to talk to Lord, Lord is going to listen to you. That all things we have seen. A separation is very important when talking with God. That's why God told, first you leave this Balak, come to a place. There I will tell you what you should say to the people of Israel. Even previously, previously we have seen that donkey got brain. That to see the angel with his own eyes. The donkey saw the angel. She was she, you know, female donkey. That's why the donkey saw the angel. Because this Balaam cannot see the angel so far. God also opened his eyes. He also seen that angel. That all we have learned previously. But today we are going to see some more prophecies of Balaam. What is going to do? Either he is going to curse the people of Israel as Balak has said. Or he is going to bless them abundantly. That all things we are going to see. In today's number chapter 24. Before continuing with our chapter help. Let us ask God. Help and pray that God may help us to understand the scriptures which we are reading today. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, thank you for helping us to understand the scriptures, the scriptures which we have read so far from Genesis to Numbers. Lord, you have been teaching us every possible life lessons from each scripture. My Father, thank you for that very much. Help us to learn life lessons from today's chapter as well, my Father. Help us to obey you in every matter. Help us to read it carefully first, understand it, read it carefully and learn some life lessons also from that. In the precious name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Numbers chapter 24 Now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go as at other times to seek the use sorcery, but he set his face toward the wilderness. Means he is seeing in the wilderness and talking to God. He is not going to Balak and Obai in his commands. Doing all that things. Means Balak told to curse the people. But he is blessing them. He is listening to Lord so far. Not to King also. He is obeying a higher authority than King. The earth King, the universe King is obeying. Not the world that place King. Not his he is not obeying that place King. You know, country King. And Balaam raised his eyes and saw Israel and camped according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. So after the sacrifice only all this are going. That bull and ram sacrifice on seven altars. After that this is going on. He is going to curse the Balak. They thought like that. But he blessed them abundantly. Because God told him already what to do. That's why he is obeying God only. Then he took up his oracle and said. The utterance of Balaam the son of Bero. The utterance of a man whose eyes are opened. The utterance of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of Almighty, who falls down with eyes open wide, all this is saying to him only. Means himself is telling that I can see God, I can talk with God, I can listen to God. But all things he is saying in different language, you know. The utterance of Balaam, the son of Bero. The utterance of the man whose eyes are opened. Eyes are open for what? For seeing God. The utterance of him who hears the words of God. Ears are open for what? For hearing God. Who sees the vision of the Almighty, again eyes are opened here. Who falls down with eyes opened wide. You can see while sleeping also visions telling us. 
how lovely are your tents of Jacob, your dwellings. He is giving them some blessings, some kind of blessings. Means his exclamation giving to them, pogging them, you know. You, how lovely are your tents of Jacob, your dwelling places of Israel, like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the water. He shall pour water from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, about fields, about grain, about water. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. He shall consume the nations, his enemies. He shall break their bones and pierce them with his arrows. He goes down. He lies down as a lion and as a lion who will rouse him. Blessed is he who blesses you and cursed is he who curses you. That thing he said and God means he's blessing the people of Israel. He will get blessing. If Balak want to curse the people of Israel, he will get cursing. He's telling that final word here. Blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. Curse will come to you who curses you, and blessing will come to you whom who blesses you. About strength, also he is talking here about lion. You know, at all things he is talking there. He bows down, the lies down as a lion, and a lion who will rouse him. Then Balak's anger was aroused. Now king is so much angry because he told to Balaam to bless the people, but to curse the people, the Lord. Told them to bless the people. Balak is telling to curse the people. So Balak is uh, usually angry. Obviously, he should be angry, you know, because he told Balak to curse the people, but he is blessing them abundantly every time. Then Balak's anger was aroused against Balak, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balak, "I called you to curse my enemies, and look, you have bountifully blessed them these three times. Third time, this is that he told to curse the people, but he has blessed them abundantly." Now therefore flee to your place. I said I would greatly honor you, but in fact the Lord has kept you back from honor. He is telling that I will honor you if you curse them. Why can't you understand all the things which you need—the silver, gold, money, everything I will give you. Then also you are not cursing the people, not listening to me. Are you not greedy for this all gifts? Indirectly is asking him. So Balaam said to Balak, Did I not also speak to you, messengers whom you sent to me? Though Balak were to give me. His house full of silver and gold. I could not go beyond the word of the Lord, He's telling clearly that I am not any more greedy for your things, your gold and silver. I don't want. I will not simply go beyond the word of Lord for just silly things. Gold and silver these are not permanent, you know, temporary. How far, how far you live, that far only they will also going to live with you. When you die, it's forgotten. It goes in another hand. Who will enjoy that? You don't know. That's why these are all not permanent. I will not my waste my time, and I will not disobey God for simply these silly things. He is telling clearly to Balak, to King. He is telling, arguing with King. Nowadays we are so fearful that we cannot tell to our higher authorities that we will not disobey God. You see, he is directly telling to King only now, telling I will not disobey God. Even if you give me so many gifts, I will not disobey. Telling is clearly. But now, not there like Balak. Nobody is there. Will tell lie, tell something. Will take this, take that thing for promotion. Take that thing. We will get this thing. We will get that thing. For that, we will ready to do anything, even lie, cheat. In that case, do anything. Disobey God. Go beyond the word of the Lord. Not obeying God. That all things are possible in present generation. But at that time, he is so strict. You know, to God only to God is obeying. Not to King also is obeying. So Balak were to give me his full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. Sticking to God so far is not going beyond that. But what I, the Lord says that I must speak. And now indeed I am going to my people. Come, I will advise you what these people will do to your people in the latter days. Now he is running against Balak only and coming towards Balak and calling Balak and telling. Now be ready. What I am telling you, I am giving you warning for your future, for all the curses which you have already given in your heart for the people of Israel. For that reason, God is going to curse you also, and your future will be worse. About that future, He is talking now. Then He took up His oracle and said, "The utterance of Balaam, the son of Beeroth, the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God, and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes opened wide." That all things we have read previously also, and explain also. All this is talking about himself. Eyes are opened, ears are opened for what? 
for seeing God, for hearing God. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out about Jesus Christ. He's talking now about our Lord Jesus Christ. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall arise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Timlet. Enemy's destruction is there. Lucifer is going to be destroyed at last. That also is going to be written here. So also are prophecies which are going to be fulfilled in coming future. You know. And Edom shall be possession. Syria also is enemy shall be possessions. While Israel does valiantly out of Jacob one shall have domain and destroy the remains of the city. Then he looked on Amalek and he took up his oracle and said, Amalek was the first among the nations, but shall he last until he perishes? Then he looked on the Canaanites and he took up his oracle and said, Frame his dwelling. Upon every country he is taking up oracle and telling them, You will be defeated by the people of Israel. Simply like that he is telling. The Israel will defeat their fighting and the final fight is coming that's going on to come. That's coming so far. That we are going to read in coming chapters in Revelations that is so far for now. In numbers only we are. That is going to come. That final fight is going to come soon. For that we are hoping and waiting. Then he looked on the Canaanite and he took up his oracle. These small fights are going on so far. The people of Amalek, Moabites, Canaanites, the people of Israel only fighting. But the final fight is going to be fighted by our Lord Jesus Christ that we have seen. A scepter means who? A star shall arise from Israel. Out of Jacob shall come one who will fight the enemy. Then he looked on the Canaanites and he took up his oracle and said, Frim is your dwelling place and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned. How long until Ashur carries you away? Then he took up his oracle and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from the coasts of Cyprus. And they shall afflict Ashur and afflict Eber. And so shall Amalek until he perishes. They are simply telling that nobody can bear this when God comes down and destroys all the earth. Nobody has that much guts or power to see God over when everything is falling down, earth is being destroyed, enemies is being fighted, Lucifer is going to die. The tall things we cannot see, cannot be here. And they shall afflict Ashur and afflict Eber. And so shall Amalek until he perishes. Then Balaam rose and departed and returned to his place. Balak also went his way. I think without seeing that situation at that time, it's better to die before only. Then we will be lifted and then taken directly to heaven. But in that scenario, if we see everything going on, all earthquake is coming, we will be more fearful than that time. In fact, we may lose our faith also in that case. Something will happen like that. So far, we have learned that only the prophecies, every prophecy which is giving is blessing only and is giving warnings also in the final prophecy we have seen that Jesus Christ is coming, destruction will happen, this king will die who is telling to do like that, the Balak, the Aromite king, we may see that also. That all things we have seen so far. Balak sends Balaam, the Amorite king is. Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites and Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many and the Moab was sick with the dread because of the children of Israel. Balak the son of Zippor, the king of the Moabites, is the king of the Moab, you know, Moabite. This is the end of chapter, even though God told them, bless them, he blessed them. King told that curse them, he didn't curse, didn't listen for gold and silver, only to God he listened. He's not that much greedy, that all things we have seen today. Hope we have understood something in today's chapter and learn some life lessons also. Let us end this session with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have helped us to understand today's scriptures. That we should not be greedy for these worldly things which are temporary and for some time only. And always have to obey higher authority than the authority which we have. Because every authority here is lower than your authority, my Father. Help us to understand that things. Always to obey you, listen to you and not be greedy about these worldly things which are temporary. That all things we have seen. And the warnings which you are giving to us, help us to take that 
and do it accordingly according to that warning help us to do something or cannot do something that all depends upon your warning my father if you are giving us warning to preach help us to preach if you are giving warning against the sin that do not do it help us do not do it for the punishment which you will give us it's very hard for us to bear even think about it my father help us to understand all this and before only escape from your punishment and do the sin no more and listen to your warnings carefully in the precious name of lord jesus christ i pray amen